Welcome to the next quick start video on creating music in Cubase Elements. We've already created the groove and the musical production building blocks. Now it's time to move on to the melody. In this video, we're going to use the chord track to give us some musical ideas for the actual notes that we can use to compose a melody. Then it's time to record the melody. We'll record a number of different takes and I'll show you a really quick tip for comping together all of the different takes. Then it's a matter of choosing the sound that we want for our vocals. We'll take a look at a few really important audio inserts or plugins that we can use to shape the sound of our melody. And we'll also take a look at the all important pitch correction tool to fine tune our pitch. We can go as organic or as contemporary as we want. Let's get into it. I've been busy building some dynamic production parts for this track. One of these sections could be used for a chorus, and then I've got a couple of different parts that I thought might work as breakdown parts or developmental parts inside the track. I've created a piano track to monitor the chord track, and I'm turning on the scales, and now chord track gives us a scale that will work over the whole entire chord progression. So you can build your melody out of that one scale. You can turn off automatic scales to click on a chord and get a number of different scale options that you might be able to use as part of your melody. You should take some time to check out those scales and try and find a melody that's going to work for you in your production. I've added a mono audio track for my microphone and now I just need to sound check my microphone. Hey, one, two, one, two, two, hey, I'm not run, one, two, two. Lots of one, twos. Once I'm happy with that, I've set up a cycle for four bars and I'm just going to cycle record my way through these vocals and find something that works. It's such a comfortable way to perform because you can set it up to loop and let the I'm performer way, warm up and get into the flow of the actual I'll take and think about what they're recording. Once I'm finished recording the takes, it's time to clean up the parts. So I'm just grabbing my range selector tool and I'm removing the end of the recording and I'm also removing any breath marks in between the two vocal lines that I've just recorded. I'm also quickly just tidying up the front end of the take and then when I'm finished doing that, I can go through and I can view the individual takes for those two individual parts, which is really neat. There's a handle on the bottom of the event and I click on that handle and it will show me all of the takes that are recorded. Now it's a matter of finding the best take. I'm just doing it quickly, but you can take as much time as you want and do as many takes as you want to get your vocals perfect. Now I'm going to look for a channel strip so I can start to shape the sound. Channel strips give us a combination of things like dynamics, tube saturation, EQ, and they're a great place to start for engineering things like a vocal track. And of course, once you've loaded it up, you can make your own changes. So I'm just adding some air on the top. Alan Morgan's given us saturation and compression to really control the dynamics and also warm the tone of the sound up. Now I can further continue to shape the sound by going into the inserts tab and finding an insert. Let's start with pitch correction. There's a number of ways you can apply pitch correction using the pitch correction plugin. I'm starting by moving the speed and the tolerance up and quite often it's a matter of feeling your way through these controls. Next up is to tell Cubase what notes I want it to pitch correct around. So I'm entering in the notes that I know that I sung and immediately you can see the orange blocks there which are telling us that there's pitch correction being applied over those notes. Next I'm going to change the source to chord track and that means it's going to pitch correct based on the chord track scales or the chord track chords. Now I'm just feeling my way around the speed and the tolerance until I'm reasonably happy with the way the pitch correction plugin is behaving. Now the vocal track is quite dry, we need to give it some ambience. So I've gone to the mix console and I've right mouse clicked on it and I'm selecting add effects channel to select a track. I want to add a stereo effect and now I'm just searching for a delay. I'm going to name the track and hit add track. Now that effect is automatically added as a send from my lead vocal. 
So it's just adding some ambience around the vocals. I'm going to repeat the process to add an effect. And I want to add a distortion send on this vocal track. If I was to add it over the vocal track itself, it would sound pretty terrible. But adding it as a send means we can control the amount in the actual mix just by using the fader on the effect channel. The key here is to make sure it's subtle, but make sure it's still helping the vocal pop through the mix. That's a pretty good start. Now let's get a little bit crazy. I'm going back into the pitch correction plugin. Just have a listen to what I'm doing here. I'll be finding my way back here. I'm not running away, I'm gonna find you. I'll be finding my way back here. So it's less of a natural sound, but it's more contemporary. I'll be finding my way back here. I'm not running away, I'm gonna find you. Once again, it's a matter of getting the speed and the tolerance right, so it's not too much. I'm not running away, I'm gonna find you. You'll know when it's too much. I'll be finding my way back in. I'm not running away, I'm gonna find On the right hand side, we can really change the texture and the tone of the pitch correction. Let's take this pitch correction to a new level. I'm highlighting my vocal takes and dragging them down to an empty area which duplicates the track. Now I'm adding and naming a MIDI track. Now we can assign the inputs and the outputs of MIDI tracks. So I'm going over to the output and I'm making sure it's assigned to the instance of pitch correction on that duplicated vocal track. Now I'm going to the scale source in the plugin and I'm selecting external MIDI note. Now the note will be pitch corrected to exactly what I play on an external MIDI keyboard. So now I'm creating some harmonies. This will also work over the top of the main melody track. So you're never limited to the actual melody that you recorded in the first place. And it's up to you to go as crazy as you want. By the way, you can even record vocals live by playing the note on the keyboard and singing. So basically, it's a vocoder inside of Cubase Elements. It's a really sweet thing to play around with. It's good fun. In the next video, we're going to look at painting a sonic picture with all of these production ideas. And we're going to jump into the mix. I'll catch you there.